Hi, everyone, and welcome. It is Karen Newman here, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the 20, what day is it? The 27th, 28th, 29th, 29th, ah, 29th of June. I, I have no sense of time. Anyway, it's the 29th of June, 2019, and we're really happy to be here. We have our special guest, Jim Charles, coming back to us. Welcome back, Jim. Thank you. How was your how was your uh, trip to Canada? Well, there's an interesting story because we got turned around at the border. <gasps> they didn't let us in because we didn't have working papers. So we did the all the teaching uh, online at my house. So, but it worked out very well. Um, okay. All things considered, everybody was very happy. So, but okay. I would love to spend time with the people that were there. I was really disappointed. Wow. And plus the fact they held us at the border for about an hour and 45 minutes, so. What went, did they say to you? Why are you coming to Canada? And you said, I'm going to teach. And then they were like, no, no, no. Yeah. Well, basically, yes, because we didn't need, we didn't know that we were going to need to work already. But that's yeah. the way God wanted it. He, he wanted yeah. everything. I'm just going with that's the way God wanted it. And, and exactly. Were, I'm just going to thank God that everything worked out very well. And, um. I'm happy with the results of the teachings, and everybody got a really good attunement. So it was good. Awesome. Very good. Okay. Well, you can tell us about that at another time. <laughs> but um, also, too, just as an announcement, still coming up on August uh, 8th through the 12th, we have the fourth Ascension Workshop in Rochester, New York. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we're still getting ready for that. Um, a lot of the subject matter are going to be chakras, uh, white magic, uh, some of the galactic symbols uh, from the sign language from the universe. We're still getting that down. In fact, I have a few more symbols, but we those are hard to translate into a book or anything, but mm. we do our best to get them through to you. Um, telepathy. telepathy, galactic language, and exopolitics from... Uh, from uh, Max. Max is going to teach a class on the exopolitics of our planet. So I think that's going to be very interesting. He's yeah. spent a lot of time on that. So uh, there's going to be some really amazing and wonderful classes. So perfect. I'm happy so, about it. So it's five seventy five for the for the yeah. stay and, and then, for the. Yeah, that takes care of two meals a day <clears throat> and your room and board, and the only meal it doesn't cover is breakfast and we're very close by to other things or you could, okay. I think every room has a little refrigerator yes. you can buy something and put it in the little refrigerator for breakfast or whatever okay. you want to do but it's going to be a really good time we have about 12 or 14 people signed up already and come what come one come all it's going to be fun perfect and if you want to sign up you can go to hukalo.org and you will find all the information on the webinar and I mean excuse me on the uh, retreat and then you can sign up there so please go to hukalo.org and also to let everyone know this is a paid webinar for our hukalo club members that means that everyone that supports human colony with ten dollars a month has special access to Jim at least two times a month um, for his paid webinar that means that the people that are in this room are all hukalo club members so thank you to everyone that does support human colony every month month after month it's really necessary and appreciated. So <clears throat> much love to you. And if you'd like to become a Hukalo Club member, you can also find that on hukalo.org forward slash webinars. So also, okay. yeah. also Ian has a group. Yes. Uh, go ahead. No, where can is you Ian? Talk about that? Yes. Every Friday, um, there's the Hukalo uh, practice channeling or channeling practice group uh, that is based on Facebook. You can just go to Facebook and join and then they do a Zoom room and it's anyone that's interested in learning to channel or practicing channeling. It's every Friday, I believe at 4.30 in the afternoon, um, but it's free for everyone who would like to practice. So, yeah. All right, excellent. That's it. Perfect. Okay, so um, we have some blessings and then, then I guess we can go into the requests and we'll get started. Yeah? Okay, Elle, why don't we start with you? Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, Greetings. I will, I will start with the light language now. 
Urus un hari ata meserante, esi parate a nicara centuro tu, i anta che si ata per anturo honiasa, ni ata pariasi, ni a nurutu chiatrama. Namaste. The love and light that is to be shown to the world is already filtering through, but it will get brighter as the darkness gets darker, but that is not a threat. It is just for you to rise. Thank you. And Mich um, excuse me, and Don is next for his blessing. Do not run from conflict or challenge, but rise up and know what is the truth. Study and learn for yourself what must be said and what must be done, and move forward with your positivity, for you will be enlightened and will learn the truth and be vindicated. Thank you. And then uh, Michelle, go ahead, Michelle. Kiera Sanzevoti, Matatura Vanzikasha, Kadavajunda, Epi Karia, Ilangarian, Andu Korshi Vasi, Kata Anditata, Jinima Kur Maturi, Dakata, Surya Sunza Kuri, Rati Ratitata, Tenoti Viakata, Anua, Kanjun Brandi Sita, Katakur Sanzivasa, Vika Laka, Tanduta, Pashum Shalom Jash, Namaste. Look closely at the world. There is much information to be gleaned at this time. Many changes are happening within you and without you. You must know that the world is changing into the fourth dimensional world that was promised, but it is a slow ascension because many are not aware. Be patient, do not rush it. It must come in a natural way. Thank you, and Barbara. Love is the answer to all questions in many ways. You have to learn what love means in all situations. There are situations that seem like they are unloving, but you can bring love to it and make that love work in a miraculous way. Thank you. Angela had a blessing as well. There is so much for us to learn at this time and so much energy coming our way in this period of the full moon, the solstice, and the eclipse. Gather your thoughts and clear your mind, for this energy will enter and change some of your concepts and beliefs. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we didn't do this before, but I just want to introduce all the people in our rooms. Um, we have Catherine, Christine, Dawn, L, Guiding Light, uh, Michelle, we have um, Randy, uh, Reinhard, Selesh, Sheer, Stephanie, myself. Who do you have in your room? We have Angie and Ray and Barb and Jack. And I think Jack that's- Jack in the back. Jack in the back. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's your name. That's your new name. That's your new name. Jack in the back. Jack in the back. Awesome. Um, we have some requests, so I'll just read them out if we can. Uh, we have Grindle to Kerr, uh, Metrot Metrotron, uh, Saint Germain. Let's see, Horus, Alika. Alika. I believe that's it. Alika, thank you. Alika, and, and that was it. And Elijah. Know they, and Elijah, always Elijah, unless uh, yes. told no. Did you he, have any? I he is I coming? Know. Okay. I All don't right. know. Yes. <laughs> I just found okay. out. All right. When awesome. we were, were interpreting the prayers, he's going, yes, I'm coming. All right, cool. All right, All right. Well, we're ready whenever you are, so. All right, we'll much love to everyone, and I will be back later. You have water because it's warm in there. Yes, it is warm today, isn't it? But we have fans and air conditioners and everything going, so. Okay, so. I it's on I water take, duty. I will take <laughs> one swig of water before I start. Where are we? Okay. <clears throat> that should help me sustain for a while. All right, perfect. All okay. Right. All right, we'll see you when you on the other side. Yes. See you Thank on you. the other side. Bye. <laughs> Greetings, I am Elijah. Today I want everyone to look deep inside themselves. I know that I've done this before with you, but this is a little different. <clears throat> Introspection is important to do every now and then. It is not something you do just once in your life, but there are times when you reach a point where things may plateau and you may not see any improvements in your life or nothing coming as a success in your life. So you may need to do an introspection, stop for a while. Many of you are busy looking at the faults of other people and not at your own. You're busy looking at how you can help other people and not how you can help yourself. For you must be inside fairly pure and fairly light to be able to get across the messages that you need to get across to other people, especially if you are a teacher or if you are someone that is a, a, an example to the world. Look at yourself. What words do you speak? Are you haughty? Are you telling people things that are correct? Are you trying to find the light within you? Or are you just spewing out whatever comes to you? Some of you are like that. Now, I'm not saying that is all bad because some of the things you spew out are the things that you have learned uh, from a past time that are very good. But there's no meaning behind it at this point it's just what you want or think they need go into your heart chakra find the anger find the emotions that are holding you back from your mission it could be jealousy of someone else could be anger because of how you feel toward many things. The world makes us angry. And we keep that anger inside instead of forgiving it and letting it go. Also, we need not look at the, the gain that we are to get from this. If you're looking for gain from all that you do, stop. Because the gain is spiritual at this point. Of course, there will be other things that come with uh, 
popularity and prestige. But you need to remember this is a spiritual journey. And that this journey is for God and not for your benefit necessarily. He may have to bring you down to raise you up. Look at many of the, the apostles and many of those that have lived in the past and God has brought them down only to bring them back up again. But some people, when they are brought down, stay down. Don't be one of those. Remember that everything that happens to you is information. Information for your victory as a missionary to the world or in your mission. Yes, you may be brought down, but learn from it so it is a stepping stone to the next part of your success. Don't let it keep you down. Don't let it put you in a state where you cannot help others. This is a great time of energy. Through this time, you will gain thoughts and access to different things that you didn't have before. There was a full moon, then a solstice, and now it coming up on the second is an eclipse. And with, with this energy that is happening in this area, you will be affected. Let your positivity come forth so it affects you in a positive way, that it runs through you in a positive way, brings you up, and lets you be strong. Now, I could go into all the alignments and different things, but what I want you to do is an introspective look at who I am, how you speak. Do you sound loving? Do you sound like you are caring? I know you may feel that you are loving and caring, but when it comes out here in the mouth, in the sound, it sounds fake. It sounds contrived or it sounds arrogant because your heart is not saying it anymore. It's your mouth that's saying it. Remember to speak with your heart and your mind. But when you speak only with the mind, it does not come out right. When you speak only with the mind, it can come out as negative in some ways. Speak with your heart. When you are speaking the words that must help others, when you speak about healing, when you speak about love and uh, unconditional can love to them, you must speak with your heart. And some of you have a disconnect there at this time. You have come to believe that everything that you learned is all that there is and there's more the love of god never stops it continues to move forward and so reattach yourself to the heart and see yourself for who you really are at this time reattach to the spirit Stop talking about yourself. How many of you hear yourself saying, I, 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 when you're talking to other people? I'm important. I'm important. I'm important. Of course you are, but nobody wants to hear that. They want to hear you're important. They want to hear this is what I have for you. They want to hear love is strong now. They want to hear healing words. They don't want to hear about your life. They don't want to hear about how important you are. 
They don't want to hear absent and vacant thoughts. They want to hear purpose. They want to hear your purpose come forth. Because your purpose is to help others. Your purpose is to give. Until it hurts sometimes. Your purpose is not to receive all the things you can get. But to give all the things you can give. And that's when you receive the most. Look at yourself. What is your goal? What is your mission? Go inside. For if you are out for money, if you are out for your own prosperity and own popularity and fame, oh, you may get there, but it will be empty. It will be an empty reward, for it will mean nothing because you gave nothing in truth. Oh, you might have given some here and some there, but the purpose in your mind was to get what you wanted. How can I tell you that you must give those things up? Go in and find the love of God within you so that you may repurpose yourself for a positive enlightenment. Repurpose all those things that are me, me, me. Repurpose all the things that are not about love and giving. Because if you believe you have a mission that mission is of what God has given you to do. And he made you who you are to do that mission. Get rid of all that garbage that does not fit with it. Love yourself, of course. Because without love of self, you can give no love to anyone else. So find yourself. Find yourself in my words find yourself in this reality doing the things that are right and are of god and not of self-importance for that speaks volumes about you people will see that if you are wanting to be self-important it's about me they will know it's not about them really you may have helped some people maybe in the past maybe even now giving great healings and doing things of that nature but they will see who you are and why you're using your gifts and your gifts can be so much greater if they're purposed for god and purposed for the mission and not just to make yourself look good. Humble yourself before God. Find that love of God in you. Let him flow. Let him repurpose you in the right way. For I see so many out there that are just after what they want. Or out to Tell everybody how great they are. That is not going to fly if you are trying to do a mission for God. They will say, they're self-absorbed. I, I doubt if they're really a good healer. I doubt if they really are doing any good at all. Believe me. The world sees what it sees. And if you are not on guard and not truly doing the missions of God, 
you will be seen for who you are. Sometimes they will see who you aren't. They will see that they don't believe you and they think you're a fake, but you are truly being what you're supposed to be. But guess what? It will come out in the end who you are and what you are doing. You will not be able to hide the truth from the world forever. You will not be able to hide the truth from one another forever. And of course, you won't be able to hide the truth from God. He is the one that gave you this purpose. Live it in the way that he wants you to live it. Love yourself, but not to the point where you're all about yourself. If you give out healing because you think people are going to give you accolades for it, that's the wrong reason for doing healing. You may be the greatest healer in the world and it may be coming through you, but if you have the wrong purpose, you will heal a lot less people than God wanted you to originally heal. Because you will turn off those that see the truth. And believe me, there are those that can see the truth. You can see the truth, can't you? I love you, and God loves you. And there is a great love that is among us. I am not here to put you down, but to have you go inside and raise you up in a way that is powerful and pure, is not greedy or misguided, but in, in the way that will really reward you when it comes right down to it. You will get your rewards. There is no question. If your mind is set on the right thing, on the right way, on the right purpose, with the right directions, with God's help, you will get all of your rewards. Fear not. He is not one that will cheat you out of anything. Give glory to God for your purpose. Give glory to God to find your purpose and to raise you up. There is none that can't be used. You can all be used, especially in this time. Go out and be happy. Show God's love through your being, through your example. But make sure that's who you're showing. Show yourself in the truest light. For God in you is the truest light. He's the one that created you. He's the one that makes your light the truest, the brightest, the greatest. So why not let him shine? You say, well, that's giving up my free will. Give it up a little bit to let God through, to help you to shine in this earth, to give healing, to give love, to teach the lessons, to, to, to let people know what it is that you are trying to do in a positive way. Be that example in the truest light. Go for it. It's your time. Many blessings. Thank you so much, Elijah. Much love to you.
Greetings, I am Takur. Welcome, Takur. I have come back. To oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I've come to give an update on what's happening with the, the galactic meetings with your people, which started on the 26th of this month and is still going on. It's only in the third or fourth day. What is it? I'm not sure of your weekly calendar right off the top of my head. But it's I'm, Saturday now. I, and this is the day where many of you will speak tonight, tonight and tomorrow night. You may come and sit if you wish. We have another, someone entered. But um, one moment, please. Yes, there are many of you that are visiting the conference. I've seen actually most of you there. And uh, there are hundreds of others that are visiting because they know they can. They've given permission to come. And this is the most humans that have ever attended a government meeting as of yet. There's over 200. So not all are going to speak, but many of you, such as Sheer and as Stephanie and uh, Christine and, and uh, Reinhardt, Reinhold, I'm sorry, and um, many of you, Dawn, you're going to speak. There are many of you, Elle. Yes. I, I see a lot of you. Uh, Karen, definitely, that are going to be speaking at these at, at these meetings. They will last for a while longer. And tonight and tomorrow night is the big night for humans to speak. There are some that have spoken already, but they were they were special purposes that were spoken about. And but now is the time for humans to speak. Uh, Saturday night and Sunday night and. Uh, and maybe even Monday night, if not everyone gets to speak. So they've taken a big chunk of time, and they have asked for humans to do uh, their their part and bring the information they want to bring to the meetings. Many of you are going to talk about first contact. Many of you are going to talk about medical assistance. Many of you are going to talk about how uh, exopolitics are working at this time. Many of you are even going to talk about the politics of the world that you are living in. And there are many subjects. Uh, there are many different uh, people in many different views. So as you bring in your view to the meetings, uh, they will be listened to by many different countries. Um, there is over 100 countries in attendance. And I believe there is 188 countries. I am not sure. It changes all the time. There's a country born, there's a country die. It, it happens all the time on your planet. So um, I believe that the number is close to 180 or 190 between there. So over 100 countries, about 120 are in attendance. So that is good. There are still some countries too far uh, behind in some ways to attend or be in, even interested at this time. They have too many of their own internal problems. But is there any questions that I can answer about the meetings? Um, there was a question from, uh, from Safira. Let me find it. Let's see. Yes, she Don, was do you see it? Do you see the question? Yes, I have the question here. Go, go ahead, ahead and ask, it. ask the question, Don. You may go. Okay. Uh, it, basically, it was from uh, Trinity, and she said that uh, she just wanted to request information about the government meetings and their update. Thank you. Yes, that, I am going to be giving an up, uh, a little more of an update. Is there any specific information that anyone wants to know? Not at this time that I've seen. All right. Let me give you a little bit more specific information, and that is that um, it seems that things are getting closer to first contact, but the way that first contact is going to come may be a lot different than we first thought. Uh, landing ships on the planet may not be the best idea at this time, for not everyone is engaged in first contact understanding. And so we do not want to risk the lives of, of our people to 
to land on the planet. We may take over the electronic systems and be on all the television sets and all the iPads and all different things to announce uh, who we are as different species and things of that nature. It will be you Gil first, of course, but there may be different species that speak during that time, uh, but you're still not quite ready for that yet either. That would cause a world panic, but in a couple years it might be available. So we'll see how that moves forward. And there's still many, many other ideas about first contact. And many of you have ideas as well. So we are listening to all things. But this idea actually came from someone in England and uh, was uh, echoed several different times because they had a situation where the televisions were taken over at one time. and. Uh, nothing major happened, but they did know that the aliens were there. So, um, or they, some of it thought it was a farce, but it really was aliens that did that. So we might do it that way. So that seems like a much more interesting and humanitarian way to do things. Thank you. Those questions in the room here. Is, is that all right? Yes, perfect. Yeah. Um, with the meetings and how they're going, how, uh, in your opinion, how do you feel the information that we are bringing to them, to the people, to the government, how is it being received? Received? Thanks. Yes. Let me tell you this. When humans speak to the governments of the world, and it is interpreted in all their different languages, it actually impacts them. Why does it impact them? Because the people are speaking. Because this is what uh, their people are thinking. They want to know that. Uh, at least most of them do. Some of them don't care. But most of them want to hear what the people think. Even though they may not be uh, giving the people what they want, in this regard, they do want to hear what they have to say. And so it is interesting that they listen probably more carefully to what the, the other humans say more than they listen to what the uh, aliens think. Now, some of them think that humans are brainwashed when they're talking and telling them that first contact is good they're going they're they're totally brainwashed by these aliens and the aliens are bad then i say to you why are you at these meetings but it is true that i there is a some of them that still say we don't trust you some of them that still say how can we know for sure which is still the same as we don't trust you so we're getting closer there are some that do trust us and believe that we are telling the truth, but are not willing to give up their prosperity, their positions, or things of that nature. But we're not asking them to do that. They are assuming that that's what will happen. They don't know what to expect. The fear of the unknown is the greatest of all things in these talks. The fear of the unknown is what grabs them and keeps them in place and does not let them go. We do talk about this fear. We do tell them that other civilizations around the universe and galaxy have experienced these fears also. But once they get to know what is in the galaxy and who is in the galaxy, you're better off. And you have more communication with everything that is happening even in your world because we will help you with greater communication greater understanding of what we are doing and greater understanding of who how we see you and how you see us how can that not be beneficial any questions yeah um sheer has a question go ahead sheer Greetings, Sikur. How are you? I am very well, thank you. 
I just want to know an overall view. Is it uh, a good session? Is it something like what um, what progress is there? Like, yes. is it a good, uh, okay. Well, there was only one outburst. Um, well, actually, it was an outburst, and then it became uh, many outbursts. But it it was about uh, bringing people. Uh, it was about um, medical care and bringing people to the ships, bringing people from the ships to the planet. That that caused a great outburst and a great amount of fear in some uh, larger countries, but not only there, but a lot of countries that are. I did not know if they can trust us or not. And so there was much discussion about that for many hours. But in my opinion, this is every every one of the uh, the galactic meetings that we go to become more and more informational and more and more close to an understanding between us. They have seen that we are not attacking. They have seen that we're not trying to take over. However, they always have that in the back of their mind, that this is some kind of trick, that this is some kind of alien um, propaganda. But once they know the truth, I'm hoping that they will come forward even greater. They, We have the assurance of about 29 percent of the countries that we know for sure that they are ready for us but that's only that's not even half so we can't come yet okay and, thank you very much and some of those i wanted to say some of those countries we were up to about 31 percent at one point and a couple countries stopped coming to the meeting so if they stop coming, they, we can't count their vote. But um, I think it's because their country is in rough shape. So, but right now it's about 29 to 30%, which is about a third of the community, uh, countries on your planet that are in agreement with uh, first contact and exchange. If there's no other questions, there are other people waiting. No, there's also some questions from um, Trinity. She would like to know about <clears throat> site to site. Site to and site is, the, is one of the big arguments. Uh, and that's where they explode on us about site to site. They, don't want, they do not want their people, your people, coming out of their <laughs> world. They're afraid we're going to be abducting them. They're afraid that we will keep them and that they would not have any say about that because remember, your world is uh, plagued with abductions from the past and they are very negative in most cases. And so they say, oh no, we can't let you do that because they don't trust us. So, and as far as us taking uh, patients they still don't trust that either. Some of them don't, or some of them just want it for the hierarchy of their government or their families and not for the people. And that's not acceptable either. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other questions. Um, I would, for I you. Would, uh, oh, Elle, did you have a question? Go ahead, Elle. Uh, the girl, uh, hello, it's Elle. I just wanted to uh, to give you much love and to uh, send greetings to the pet and this do. Um, greetings. I hope um, um, I hope you are very good with all the programs that you are working on and um, all the new technology you have. Um, yes. My uh, my question is: Are there new ships? Because um, I am aware of uh, two, one on Europe and one of the America. Um, above America, are there new ships from the group Pitmir um, Union? New ships, did you say? Yes. Well, we have 15 around the planet at this time. And yes, we are, uh, there is talks about improving uh, and um, uh, sending even more ships for this planet because 
there's a great outcry for medical attention from uh, our group and from El Yaha. And so with that in mind, and also people coming to the, the colonies, we are working on uh, an even, even more different uh, kinds of colonies. We're working on a colony uh, for musical uh, instruction uh, because musical is healing and toning and all these different things are healing. Some of that is used in the healing area, but we want to work basically with some music as well uh, for other purposes. So, because uh, music and toning and things of this can be scientific and be very uh, I know, I, I am in this program. We have yeah. talked about this, yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, yes, there are more ships coming. Much love, much love from uh, my area of the world. <laughs> much love to you as well. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, Very well. We have hey, hey. Oh, there's a okay. question in the room. Hold okay, on. thank you. Yes? So what, what do I do to be able to partake in the, the meetings? Is there anything that I have to do? We just ask, and you will. they will come to you in your sleep. All you have to do to become part of the meetings is to show interest in it. They'll come to you in your sleep, and if you say yes, they will send you astrally to the meetings. Many do not remember being there. Some will remember being there. But it is how advanced you are that, uh, that will determine if you remember or not. But they will, they will come get you. Very good. Thank you. Very good. One more. Oh, there's a question? Yes. For me. Oh, Angel. there's Christine also. Hold on, Christine. Yes. You know who I am. Raymond. Yes. yes. How are oh, you? Yes. Good. From the other day, thank you for the healing you did on me. You are welcome. And out of that, I give up my seat so that someone else may enter in the discussions well there are still empty seats there right, as many good. as many as want to come are are right. there are available you are in spirit when you go yes. that or in astral so there is plenty of room okay. we could go another couple hundred humans oh, easily right. oh, i wasn't sure how many yes you may still come all right the more the, um, the better there's a question from um, Trinity. She's saying, what steps would you take or would should we, should we as humans take on the earth to prepare once they've agreed to open contact? Your preparation is to know that there will be some people that are will still be frightened. There will be some people that will not still expect it. There, there is no way that we could get the world 100% ready for first contact. It's just not possible. The frame of minds that uh, most humans are in, about 85% of the humans are still in a very third dimensional thought process, maybe even more. But that's what we're saying, about 85 to 87% are still in a great third dimensional thought process until they start uh, understanding their their uh, about what fourth dimension has to offer because it is becoming more available to them, um, then uh, we will be able to do more with uh, bringing people to the to our world. But right now, prepare yourself with your light language, with your uh, with information about aliens. If you're a channeler, ch channel them and let people know that they are positive beings, uh, any way you can for disclosure is a beautiful thing. Thank you. Christine has a question. Go ahead, Christine. Yes. Um, greetings, Tucker. Greetings. Um, I was wondering, um, is um, the U.S., do they have a representative at the meeting? They have several, actually. Oh. There is always more than one representative from most countries the larger ones especially. There is one representative from smaller countries usually, but from United States, there is actually five 
people there from the United States. There's five from the USSR or Russia or whatever you want to call it there. There's four from China and four from Japan, four from Australia, three from England, three from Canada, three from Brazil. There's multiple people from some countries. But um, are they um, with the um, negative um, feelings or are they actually willing to listen? There are some that are neutral. I will be honest. They will not say whether they are for or against. But there are a couple of negatives, yes. They're, they're distrusting, they're untrusting, because they don't even trust themselves in some way. They know themselves. You see, that's where distrust comes from, is when you yeah. become distrustful. So um, if you're a person that's been shady or negative, then that's usually your stand on this kind of thing. But of course, we are shooting down some of their thought processes as well as we can to show them that we are not negative and that we are not actually out to exploit them, not out to, to overtake them, and many of the other things that they say. Yes, they are, uh, this species is in demand around the universe because of their DNA. And we haven't been able to get samples of it and make serums out of the DNA that has been collected and help other species. That is one thing we actually do to help ourselves survive. But it is not that we are exploiting humanity. We're also helping it. So we're we're trying to let them know we're here for good purposes and not negative ones. Is the, when um, people from the U.S. speak out, citizens speak out at these um, sessions, um, are they hearing us or are they ignoring us? Well, they are listening intently because you are their people. You are the people of the world. So they do listen very intently. I'm not knowing really how they're thinking about it because they don't always speak their mind. Not every country says what they think. But when it comes to the medical, they do have lots of comments about that. And when it comes to site to site, there are lots of comments about that. Now, being friends in the astral and outside in the exopolitics. They know very little about that, but yet we give them some ideas of what's happening and that they really seem to like. And I, I think they even trust that to some point because it's not really affecting them in any way. It's just information. So they like the get, getting information, but they don't like giving information too much. Has um, our present president, um, Trump, or his family, have they um, gone to any of these meetings? They've been to every one. I mean, his uh, Trump and his uh, daughter have been to almost every one. Wow. Now that's incredible. No, they've, it, it actually, there's not that many of them that has happened. This is only the third one since he's been in, or fourth one since he's been, he's been in office. So there's not been regular meetings like there used to be. Yeah. They, there was there was a dip uh, of, of space and time of, the, of about uh, a year almost, almost a year where there were no meetings. Wow. Not quite. It was less, a little less than a year. Thank you very much, Takur. You're Anything else? Yes, Trinity has a question. <clears throat> Hello, Takur, can you hear me? Yes, greetings. Hello. So my question was um, when, my question was what would our governments do once they agreed to open contact 
um, like you said, maybe you will all appear on TV sets and and iPhones and all that stuff. But um, once there would be an agreement, I'm sure that would happen in the government meeting. And then what would they do to prepare the world? Would they? Um, they, are, they are not going to, I do not think at this time, they are ready to accept any of what we have to say, uh, except for, like I said, the 30%. But I think that if, if they do and when they do, they will probably uh, have some uh, information leaking to the public that this is going to happen. I do not think that they would risk their popularity or anything of that nature by, by admitting that they know that this is going to happen. For a lot of people would uh, look down on them for actually having it permitted to happen. If you understand what I'm saying, I think that they yeah. will not risk their own popularities to say aliens are going to take over the TV sets. There would be an outrage. I see. Um, so, okay, th thank you very much for answering that. And about disclosure, because now in the media on our world, um, there's more and more admittance that there are UFOs and things of this nature, this coming right. out. Is there is there a, a nefarious agenda behind that? Like they want to prepare a false flag attack? Like some uh, people. That is, we've heard that many times. Uh, there are those that are uh, disclosing things at this time, to, but it's not in a ne necessary positive way. It's in a very uh, matter of fact way. It's not good or bad. So that makes us um, wary of why they're releasing the information. Uh, at this time, it is also, uh, there have been threats of a false alien attack and so that people will have a negative view of aliens. There are yeah. some countries that would do that. Okay, so the media are now allowing so-called disclosure. Um, are you aware of that? Like there was a big incident where some military... Yes, we are aware of it. But once yeah. again, that's not a very positive thing in some ways. It's okay. all very matter of fact. We don't know if they're good or bad, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And the people who attend from different planets, and when we attend, do we stay there or do we go back home and come back every we day? go back home, if you stayed there, your day would be very rough. Your, it would be very rough. And many come and go for their own. There's different time zones. And so yes. you are there at a certain time. Others are there at a certain time. I can only be there a certain time. I'm not there 100% of the time because I must rest as well. So we do change off personality and staff because of rest periods, time zones, and things of this nature. But it is all very positive what we are doing in the astral. Of course, and many of the people uh, on the earth, they have to switch out personnel and different things during these time periods because they're all in different time zones all around the world. Okay, and when we go in astral to these meetings as humans, how do we look to the people in the governments? Do we look ethereal? Do we look solid? How no, you look ghost-like and you look actually perfect. Um, that's... That, they question that, whether you're the really real humans or not. But when they hear you, when they hear what you have to say, uh, usually that convinces them that you are human. Some of you have are very articulate, and some of you are somewhat articulate, and then there's a few that are not, uh, not articulate at all. And that, that convinces them that we're letting everyone speak. Okay. And when we, one, one last question, and I'm asking because I think it's interesting for others as well. It's not just about my, my questions, but um, when there's a break, when there are breaks, do we intermingle with the government people? Do they intermingle with no. each other? They will not intermingle with you unless you were there in a political or in a official uh, capacity. Then they talk to you. But you will not be able to go down and mingle with the people. It's just not possible. Oh, I see. Okay. 
Thank you very much, Dicker, for the information today. It's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Um, I do. Um, Elga wants to send her love and peace to you and Wonderful. give you a thank okay. you and appreciation. And then Steve has a question. You're not getting out of here too fast, of course. Please stay uh, well, with us for a little while. Very well. If they have questions, then I'm willing to answer. Great. Go ahead, Steve. Hello, Dakar. Thank you for your heavy involvement in all this. I have much gratitude. Um, and please have them appro approach me for these meetings. My question... You, uh, you're there. I am already... Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. My question you is... You already said you wanted to be there before, so they, you are there. All right, excellent. So so my, my question is an in, in involvement to this TV plan, and I understand the practicality of it. But uh, what what kind of tentative plan is there for face to face interactions after this uh, this TV first contact happens? That's what we have to work out with the governments when they agree with it. You see, many times when uh, they when we have any kind of agreement with any governments, we there's a lot of work to do once there's an acceptance. Uh, so we have to tell them what to expect. They tell us what they expect, and we work from there. Thank you, Dakar. So we're still in discussions. I'm also running into a lot of people with feline energies, so I'm starting to feel. <laughs> uh, there is a lot of Lyran energy around. I, I try not to uh, bring that up too much, but uh, the Lyran energy in Gurkvaknir is quite strong. A lot of Lyrans have just recently joined the staff on many of the ships. I, uh, there's a, like at least 50 more Lyrans on the in on board on many of the ships and we're bringing more ships in and so uh, the Lyrans have because I'm an ambassador they're learning um, how to help me out and uh, work in ambassadorships and other places they feel the Lyrans have a, a personality for ambassadorships and so uh, they're working on that a little bit uh, to help in other languages in other uh, countries for I'm only translating in perhaps three different languages and that's all I understand and there's a lot of ground crew with Lyran Lyran energies in them as well I did I didn't yeah. think I thought it was a minority but it's more than I thought so that's, yes there's that's, a lot yes that's neat all right thank you thank you my You're welcome. <clears throat> excuse me there's a question from Marlena asking about face-to-face. Uh, -face. I don't know if that's different than site-to-site, -site, um, but she had asked face -face about Face-to-face would be site-to-site. -site. We're okay. working on that. It is a difficult uh, road that we are on because of how many are against it, uh, the face-to-face -face and site-to-site. -site. It's They want to come and visit some of the uh, agents and uh, politicians want to come to visit, but they will not agree not to bring weapons. And for them to come, they cannot bring weapons. So they feel defenseless if they come here. But we are we do not want weapons on the on the ships. So uh, we we have a we have not come to terms with that yet either, because. Uh, they have the first time we brought uh, political people to the ship uh, site to site because we do have that ability. Uh, we brought them up, but they had guns and weapons. We sent them right back down. I have a question about uh, the difference between so you have a lot of people that are attending in their astral dream state. They have to, yes. And then people like Trump, is he attending in his physical body? When he is at, yes, but he is not, he is physical on the planet. Mm. And we are appearing in this giant dome that they have set up. Okay. So, so he has full memory of all of the meetings. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, we're waiting on question from Marlena if she had one from the chat. I don't know. Don, has she responded? If so, you can just read it. No, she, she says no, she has no questions at this time. Thank you. Very well. Okay. 
and it was not her that asked that face-to-face -face question. Oh, okay, great. Okay, thank you. All right, yeah, um, we have some other questions. I don't know if these are pertinent to you, but you can say, and if not, we'll hold them for someone else. Yes. Um, someone was asking, Don Hausman was asking, or is that right? Richard Hausman was asking, can he make a deal to have his fourth dimensional wedding ring brought into um, oh, his wedding and, ring from the fourth dimension be sent to him? Any Richard fourth Hausman. dimensional items are still, they have to remain in the fourth dimension at least for now. Because any proof that we exist, um, that we sent to them, or that he can claim that we sent to him, will be he will be questioned and taken in, and they the the men in black will actually know if we send anything to the third dimension. Okay, great. And Don has a question. Go ahead, Don. Uh, yeah, so I was just wondering, um, would communications on the camera, like we are doing on a computer now, be allowed between ourselves and yourselves? Um, if it's proof that we exist other than, if you see our faces, our true faces, uh, Men in Black will report that. Gotcha. So we would like to do that. We would like to just come and talk to you ship to person or ship to group. That would just be a wonderful thing to do. We are not permitted to do that yet, and that is also part of the talks. Okay, thank you very much. It would be interesting, I'm sure, though. Uh, no, it would be actually more personable. Exactly. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings to you as well. Uh, many times they are, when we talk about this, they said, if you have a human form that you could take, we will allow it. And that, that defeats the purpose. I know. Blessings, brother. Sister. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions. El, did you have any more questions or not? Um, I, wa I wanted just to jump in, and uh, because I heard about the new Lyrans that are coming to the ships, um, I know I have some new DNA infusions. Um, is there a Liran one that's additional to what I already have? Is there additional what? Liran DNA infusion. Oh, yes. We can do Liran DNA infusions for you. Thank you. And Sheer has a question too. Go ahead, Sheer. Greetings once again, Tikur. Um, <laughs> is there anything that the government did agree to that could be um, manifest right now? Is there something that you asked them and they said, okay, and now we can do it and you couldn't do it before the meeting? Well, um... We asked them we, to bring more humans, and they agreed to that. They wanted to see how many we could get, actually. Um, they asked us to uh, write down uh, what we would expect uh, in all situations. They wanted, actually, a very large document written uh, like a treaty, almost, to uh, say, yes, we're not going to harm you. That we have already done uh, many times for them, at least three times with different wordings so that they can feel some countries it didn't interpret well into their language. So we've done several different documents in about eight languages so that they know that we are, are, are at a truce with them as we do these meetings, which we find very interesting since they're only talks, and we have not been aggressive in any way, but we had to make treaties with them uh, before we could even talk. So there is progress, yes. Uh, we have asked for a, a couple things in trade with them, and we were able to trade a couple things only in greatest... Um, need if they had a great need for something and we actually supplied that need 
and that should have brought more trust toward us but it it actually they gave something in return so it was just uh they just felt like it was a barter and that there was really no trust involved in it so there really is very small things but there i could go on and on and tell you about little things but the big things are still in question i see and don um a question about us speaking with you on the phone or face to face with you in human form i know that maybe you don't see the benefits of it but i think that if they will allow it that it will be a huge difference for oh, oh i i see the benefits it's so, that they will how, allow it. oh go ahead so how about uh, asking them just to speak with us and even not a, a video call just to speak with us on the phone like i will pick up the phone and you'll be on the other side with no picture and no nothing I and see. they could even hear me and spy on me <laughs> willingly i see that's Would fine they? we find that we think that it would be very beneficial to have face-to-face -face talks uh, with our face exposed to you they feel that it would be detrimental to their purposes for us to do that so how they feel that way i'm not sure but it would be proof it would be proof that we exist in um, other forms uh, but they will not allow it but i would love that i would i would i would honor that that would be great um i'm trying to be more clear not face to face but a normal phone call when someone speaks on the other side and you just hear the voice even hear it as a human voice yeah. of them listening to the conversation to make sure that is nothing shady is going on that would mean a lot to us i know that you might not see the huge difference but for us it will be a huge difference will you well, yes. that and the, tell thing them? Is, the thing okay. is this how will you know that, that that you are actually talking to us? I would know. You would know? You yes. see, because I think that they would try to interfere with that because they there is so much interference on the phone lines already. They could take over the conversation. I'm not sure I would trust that completely, but I would like it. I see. Well, this, that is a good point, and uh, I leave it to your... Uh you realize that they can uh, manipulate the phones in yeah. so many ways we see it from here and they do already they look at you through your phone some of you are being looked at through your phone through your television sets i don't want to make you paranoid but there are some of you that they look at so wear your clothes when you're in front of your tv <laughs> hmm um also another unrelevant question but is there any more races that are going to join the group fit near i know that the last one was yes. the syrian and the last and before that were the uh, fendorians are there any more that are about to join your family there are uh, there is some from andromeda that are not humanoid that we are considering the lai would like to join it's uh oh. would like to join us there that's the spelling a l e i um they are a snail like species um they are very intelligent and very advanced and they perhaps would like to join us but we are uh we're going processing them now and also there is another species called the kior which is a humanoid species that would like there are some sectors of their population that would like to join us so we're looking into that as well that's a, some great news thank you very much and much you're more. welcome um <clears throat> um Khaleesi uh, asked, does she have Liren DNA? If so, how much? 
I did not, there was conversation. Sorry, um, uh, Khaleesi asked, did she have, um, or Khaleesi Gabrielle Starseed asked, does she have Lyran DNA? If so, how much? Uh, yes, she does. Um, 4%. 4%, thank you. And Trinity has a question. Go ahead, Trinity. Ask it. Oh, thank you, Karen. Are there <laughs> other federations aside from uh, your Rukrik near there from the galactic side at these meetings with the government? Oh, of course. Um, Ashtar Command is there. The Orion Council is there. Uh, the Lightworkers, um, I'm not sure what their council is called, but they are there. <clears throat> also, the Octorian Council is there. The Dolphin and Whale Alliances are there. Um, there's many different alliances that are there off and on. Many, many different angels have also arrived uh, at, at different points. Oh, thank you. And, you know, about this plan to show up through uh, the media, TV, cell phones, are there any other options? Because people could always say that's been manipulated as well, uh, you know, yeah. when first in contact. Are there any other options aside from that? Well, let me tell you this. Your people do not have the capability to do that worldwide. They, we do but they, your people do not have that capability. They are not working together to do that. They do have the capability, but they're not working together to, to enable that. And so we would be able to do that because we do have connections from all over the world. Your people are not working together to do connectivity around the world. So at this point, it would be able to be proven that it was us because you, you're not working together well enough to do it. Okay, and after that would happen and there would be a general response, would you then show up physically? Is that the idea first that, and then if it's positive, then- you would Only show up physically if we are invited after that. Mm -hmm. That's still the rule. We still have to be invited. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We cannot just show up. Okay. What about nations like Africa and some other third world countries that don't have that technology? What's how would do now, but not as much. There would be several people gathered around a television in some countries. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you, Tucker. There are questions in the room here. Sure. Go ahead. So, I'm wondering since um, how many of the public would have to, what percent of public would have to want to invite you to not have to include the leaders since they're being on different bill. No. It is the rules from the Galactic Council that the gover must, m government must invite us, the okay. governments. Okay, so it doesn't matter what percent so of the public. So once first contact is made, each government would probably have uh, a say, but we're hoping that it would be universal around the world so we can make rules that would fit every country at once um, on how to do this because everybody will want rules and regulations on how we move in and out of their space and how the people will move in and out of their space if that is even allowed but there would be rules and regulations and we're afraid it would be different in every country so we we'd have to have a hundred and some contracts, but right now we would like to have just one universal one if that would happen. Okay, four meters. Okay, thanks. Yes, and there's another question in the room. Yes. Here. Sir. Yes. Hi there. Greetings. The question is, is you had mentioned something that we would be able to interpret the language when we channel. Yes. Is that will that be another download? The interpretation of the light languages is now starting to happen with other people being able to interpret so it is another download once you are ready to receive it closer to the time of uh first contact okay. yeah, 
continue. Oh, Are my you there? Mic, yeah, like my mic would unmute. Uh, there's a question from Catherine in the room. Catherine, go ahead. Greetings, Takur. How are you? I am well. Thank you. And yourself? Doing well. Thank you. I wanted to say thank you uh, for your galactic uh, healing energy class. Um, thank you for bringing that to us. It's really changed um, my life and how I operate with others. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Uh, That's very good news. <laughs> thank you. I have a question about um, something that I have heard called misophenia which is i have very sensitive hearing and i know it's connected to a gift that i'm supposed to use while i'm here but it causes a very strong emotional reaction before i can capture the thought and control it i didn't know if there was something that uh, you could suggest for me to be able to help with that situation yes i would i would i would tell you to take the sound in through the third eye and not through the ears as much try to listen with your third eye because the third eye has many capabilities that people are not aware of so when you're trying to use this gift bring the energy in through the front and so the sensitivity won't be as strong of the ears also you can bring it in through the eyes as well and send it to the ears now you'll have to learn how to do that but I see that you have the capability to do that. Otherwise, you would not have the gift. So right. bring the information in through the front and send it to the ears. And therefore, it will change how your emotional response. But part of that emotional response that you get is good, but not the overwhelming portion of it. Right. So, you need to bring that in. You'll still feel the emotional response, but it won't be so overwhelming that it's uh, a destructive. It will be a more a comprehensive and compatible with your system. They want you to start using your third eye. I see it's very open. So mm -hmm. I want, they want you to start using this for sound, uh, attracting sound. I, if you meditate, which I see you do occasionally, um, I would like you to do some meditations where you bring in the intention that the third eye become a hearing device as well. Okay. All right? Yes, thank you very much. Does that make sense to you? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Good. So uh, the music thing that you were talking about earlier, I would like to volunteer for that, please. Yes, we are looking for teachers from the earth. We will tell you what you need to know once you're here. But the, that colony isn't finished yet. We're sure. still working on some of the details with it. But mu a, music, um, a music place is something that's been requested by many people. And uh, because they, are, they use the music, the tonings, the bowls, the uh, tuning forks, we use those in the healing class, but uh, this is a place to learn how to use them. In the healing class, you have to use them. You already have to know how to use them. But, so this is learning how to use the music uh, that is available for positive healing, positive communication, uh, all the kinds of things uh, that it is used for in all dimensions. Music is is one of those things that transcends all dimensions. Mm -hmm. All and right, thank sound, you very much. Of course, yes, you're welcome. Shalom. Shalom. Um, Don is going to ask the questions from Jess M and from the YouTube chat, if if he can, please. Don. Very well. Okay, just a second. <laughs> uh, okay, Jess M has a question. What ships are near Northern California? And what is their main purpose at this time? Much love. There, there are ships in more close to Southern California, but there is ships in Northern California, especially around the Mount Shasta area. There's at least two ships there right now. We have a ship there. 
from Gurk Creek near that's very close to that area, just north of um, Mount Shasta. Also, we have there, there's also Orion, uh, there's an Orion ship there, and there's a Pleiadian ship that is coming to that area. Thank you. And uh, Krellick Taken uh, asks, do one uh, do one world governments exist on other planets and is it the norm uh, or normal when it comes to planetary social sustainability? Thank you. Oh, Krillak Terkar, yes. Um, yes, there are one world uh, uh, governments. Uh, not as many as you might want to think, but they do exist and for the most part, are very successful. Let me tell you why. They have not been seeded the same way as this planet, and so their species are more unified in many ways. This planet has many different races, where the planets with one specific race have one specific government, and it usually works out very well. Um, there are troubles with every kinds of governments that you can imagine. So, but one species uh, planet, uh, meaning that they all look very much similar and there's not very much difference in languages. There are different languages, of course, but they all relate to the main one and they've been officialized, made official languages and everyone has to learn that language. Those there's about three that I can think of out of thousands that are like that. So that's very unusual, but it, it does exist. And thank they you. are successful. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, that's all the questions I have at this time. Thank you. I, I wanted to add, on those one civilization planets, there are civil wars that break out. And so war is not, uh, it, it's not foreign to others cultures and species. There are under different understandings. And on one of those particular worlds, there was half of the world was against the other half of the world. It was like almost 50-50. Um, but they have learned to calm themselves and be uh, more uh, cultured. Okay. And uh, the next question is from Trinity. Go ahead, Trinity. Thank you, Don. I have a question uh, because you mentioned, of course, that the Yael would be the ones to be present for open contact. Uh, so uh, the Pleiadians also say that they're responsible for our ascension. So those two things are different, but um, can you explain the difference? I mean, I understand yeah, technically. Uh, the ascension is different than first contact. Uh, that is not a spiritual awakening to have a first contact. But it is that the Pleiadians are in charge of the spiritual rising of the planet, and they're doing the best they can to keep everything on track. Now, a first contact may help with some of the spiritual understanding and awakening, but it's actually separate from the ascension. It may not even happen in in age for a while so the ascension is going on already whereas first contact there are many things happening with the uh, people getting understanding and uh information coming out and all these things but it hasn't happened yet and it, so it, it doesn't contribute to a spiritual understanding but uh the ascension is about that and also about the next step in your evolution, which also first contact is not about. Oh, it's not? Why? First contact is not about the next step in evolution. Well, wouldn't because it be you are evolving that? at your pace as humanity, yes, having a first contact come in might speed that up a little bit, but it really has nothing to do with aliens. It's about a human understanding and human uh, 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 understanding themselves as beings more than understanding uh, other cultures.
but yes, they must understand the cultures of their own world before they understand the cultures of some other world. So the thing is, the ascension is a spiritual rising, and, and first contact really has nothing to do with that. Okay, thank you, That's because right. I thought, okay, because I thought that with the ascension, um, a larger percentage of Earth's population and governments would be open for first contact. That's why I thought it would help um, one with well, the other. Yes, that would facilitate, uh, it would facilitate um, more of a, a first contact thought process, but it's yeah. not first contact that is causing the spirituality. Okay, thank you so much for explaining that. Okay, I hope to see you at the meetings. <laughs> yes. Thank but you. once first contact comes, yes, spirituality might change some on your planet. But yeah. the spiritual, the ascension was still coming long before the first contact. So you cannot say that first contact is part of that spirituality. There are many around the world growing spiritually, but are, are not aware that first contact is even coming. That's a very good point, actually, because there's so many people that believe that they are intertwined and dependent, and first contact will come for the unevolved as well as the evolved. Correct. It has nothing to do, one has nothing to do with the other, and that's why it gets so messy when everyone ties everything together. I, I Yes. I You know, I don't even, I can't even think of them together, to be honest with you, because there's such different experiences spiritual rising is so different than a first contact a first contact really isn't spiritual at all but it may cause some right. spiritual change right exactly and i th that's where a lot of the the things are going a little screwy right now in our world especially in the especially in the et wanting people and then the spiritual community because they're trying to make one the same as the other but they're really they're really not and, and they're that's really not. no I appreciate um, you saying that. i mean when they come and speak to you on the tvs as if that's what they do it's not going to be about spirituality it's no. going to be about well it might a little bit be about spirituality mm -hmm. but most of it's going to be about how we can communicate one with another it's going to be more political in in many ways than it is a spiritual connection because there are many people on your world that are not spiritual at all so it cannot really be uh, fully a spiritual connection when first contact comes it must be an understanding a meeting of the minds thank you so much um there was uh there was a question from Sebastian Karaman. Uh, it says, please, to, Don, can you ask? Because I'm choking over here. Can you ask? Yes, I can ask. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, Sebastian Karaman asks, please, to Kurt, can you tell me, do you have any ships around uh, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam? If yes, uh, which region, please? Thank you. Yes. Um, I believe it's Leo. They're over Laos and um, at this moment. And uh, they are very close to Thai, going towards Thailand. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Don, was that a question that you typed to me in the in the Facebook chat or was that just, oh, just a, a comment? Question? Just a comment. Okay, all right. I th I, L, do you have another question or not? I am good. Namaste. Okay. Well, right. there is someone else that really wants to come. Okay. Well, we, I think that's all of our questions. And uh, I will let them come. Much love to everyone. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for listening to the updates. Thank you so much. We missed you. Many blessings, and I will talk to you again. Yeah. There we go. We don't yeah. know who that is. <laughs> Greetings. One moment, please. You gotta give me a minute here. Yeah. 
getting into this body. I, they have to find a better way. Uh, you talk about evolution. No, I, I have to evolve somehow. So, all right. Hello, everybody. Hi, Barry Grindle. You know who I am. Hello, Grindle. Yeah, this is Priscilla Presley. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm I'm Grindle. I love Priscilla, by the way. Um, go ahead if there's any questions. Yeah, I sure have a question. Sheer has one already. Go ahead, Sheer. Yeah. Hey Grindle, this is Nivy. How are you? Greetings, Nivy. Wonderful to hear from you. Mm. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about uh, the situation in, in Iran. It seems that about a week ago, uh, we almost went into war. There have been attacks uh, on two ships in the Gulf of Oman, and an American drone has been uh, shot down. My question, uh, because there's been a lot of speculation, is this Iran attacking? Is this a false flag uh, to try to get Trump into a war? What's really going on? Yeah, they want a war. There's no question about it. Um, they they feel that they've been overlooked they've been discriminated against they've been hated they've been lied about they're really angry they're going to they will nobody better touch them right now uh because they're going to retaliate they feel that jihad of any sense or of any kind is what what is necessary for them to regain what is rightfully theirs as far as respect this is about respect and this is about what they are who they are as a people so big time they are not going you don't want to mess with them right now so does this mean that this war is inevitable uh, not inevitable but i think <coughs> very possible <laughs> water <laughs> uh, this could turn into a world war is this uh, the event the catastrophe that uh, we have we have heard about it could possibly be I uh, cannot tell you for sure because actions have to be taken for a war to begin those actions have not yet been taken and they don't have to be taken so keep that in mind but there's a lot of people out there that don't understand how Iran is really feeling. And that's why I'm here to say it. Hopefully someone in uh, a very high place will hear me say, don't piss them off anymore. They're already pissed. And they're, they're ready for action and they're not they don't care who it is they will take action against them the united states russia anybody that pulls any of the, anything against them they will retaliate that could cause some very big problems and are there, are there people in the trump administration that try to start the war try to start spark a conflict there are there are people everywhere that try to stop conflicts. Stop conflict, start. Oh, start conflicts? Yes. And yes. there are people everywhere trying to start conflicts. Because, all right, say you're a general and you're just sitting around doing paperwork. A war is much more fun. So um, they would be for it. And that's the wrong reason. But yet, it is the truth um admirals and all those things that that don't have a war going on and are just sitting around going um training these people and getting reports is like boring let's have a war wrong reason but yet they're they're in command and that gives them power gives them uh, a way to express themselves and gives them notoriety because their names are going to be in the news now because Colonel so-and-so and Admiral so-and-so and General so-and-so is going to be uh, pushing this particular group of troops over here and whatever. So it's the wrong reasons that a war would start. But there are those out there 
that don't care if it's the wrong reasons. They just want it to be. Plus, some of them, are, it's not in my area. They're not dropping bombs on me. So what the heck? Let's do it. So it's it's not good, but it's the mentality of humanity at times that causes these kind of things to happen. Even in your government, there are those that are going, let's do it. Yeah, but there are a lot of, like myself, saying, what are you, nuts? This is too close by. This will start things going like you have never seen before. Because there has never been technology and bombs like there is now. There, a war at this point, it will be highly technical. It, you might see bombs and stuff, but there's a lot more technology behind it than ever before. It's so much more dangerous, so much more accurate, and so much more destructive. And most of... and. You don't want any chemical wars going on because those chemicals, that'll just melt you. You'll just be a pile of whatever. Some of the things they have out there, the biological stuff, you don't want that to enter the world because you'll never get rid of it. You'll never, ever get rid of it. If there's biological war, you'll never get rid of it. It will destroy a great deal of the population. So, yes, a war at this time, not a good idea. So what can be done uh, to prevent it? What can we do? What can you do? Well, it's all about the governments. The governments are the ones that make the decisions. The people can cry out and, and say, we don't want war, and this is what we want. But you have to have a reason, uh, uh, or you have to have the, a thought process about it or they'll just dismiss it. So say, look, there's much more bombs now. Everything's more intelligent now. Why would you want a war of that kind in this day and age? It's just, it's brutal. It would be brutal. And it would just, it would end up destroying a good population of the world. Even from that, if, even if it was only in that area, a good portion of the world would die from the diseases in the in that in those uh, if it was uh, become a bacterial war of uh would be awful well thank you for your efforts to try to prevent this war i hope uh, we can do whatever yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy now a biological war at this day and age would be crazy and but they have biological weapons. So it is a, pos a possibility. Everyone has biological weapons at this point. Everyone, to some extent. Your government, United States, Russia, China, Japan, uh, everywhere you look, England, it, Poland, Germany, everywhere has uh, biological, and they have technological weapons, they have Oh, so many different things. You don't want a war. No. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean to bring the gloom and doom. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Do you want jokes instead? But um, that is the truth. I mean, I can't say that they don't have it when they do. So. Uh, uh, Trinity has a question. Go ahead, Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Grindel. Yeah. <laughs> Can you please give us your take on the government meetings? Because it, there doesn't seem to be much progress going on with the major issues. You may not see much progress going on, but these meetings are important to wear down the governments. This is what it's doing. It's not there. To, uh, they're not, they know they're not going to be making great decisions right at this moment but every time they have one of these meetings the governments are worn down just a little bit more just a little bit more people accept the the alien agenda just a little bit more understanding comes through so these are about the changing of the times and getting prepared for the change 
You may not see it as doing any good, but it's doing an amazing job of moving things forward in the thought processes of many governments. Even though they're not taking action at the moment, these are necessary to wear them down and to let them understand that these are positive beings that are out here and wanting a, an alliance and, and some, uh, for you to be part of the neighborhood. So you say, eh, they're not doing any good, but they definitely are. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Steve, go ahead. Hello, yeah. Grindel. Greetings. Yeah. Hi. I just, I, I have a, a reptilian ground crew friend now in my social circle, so I'm oh, <laughs> connecting with those uh, enemies. Friends of mine. All right. Do For sure. But So my question is about this uh, To The Stars Academy company that's obviously being contracted by the government for disclosure. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, like some of us go crazy because we're ready for it. And I know what information they have. Yeah. Why is it taking them so long? I know they have physical proof. Why is it taking them so long to, to get through their information? It's a bunch of bureaucracy. That's why the bu bureaucrats are creeping this all tied up and saying, oh, in order for you to do that, you have to have this kind of approval, that kind of approval. These five people have to sign off on this document. Um, I have to know who you are that you're getting to s tell this stuff. I want I want it written out what exactly they're going to say. I, and I want them to memorize it so they don't go off. And Because I want them to say exactly this, blah, blah, blah. You have no idea how much bureaucracy is behind that. And how much bullshit, oops, excuse me, uh, is behind that. But it is just a lot of people giving their ideas about what should be said, how it should be said, uh, if, how, if it should be memorized, if it should be, uh, who can they trust to do what they want them to do? Because it's all has to be, it all has to be, uh, in, in the government's eyes, it all has to be put into place. Right, like audited 18 times, right? <laughs> oh, more than that. It's audited 118 times. So wow. um, you have to understand that they. this is a big deal. Yes. This is a really big deal. And so it, they have, they're treating it like a really big effing big deal. So, uh, you know, everybody has their opinion and everybody has their signature on the, the paper. I don't want to do it, or I do want to do it. I This is what I have to say. They're sending memos back and forth. If you would see some of these memo, memos, you would crap your pants. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, how stupid people really, really are. But um, it's going to take a little time because there's a lot of bullshit. Yeah. That's yes. All. Yeah. Uh, we're learning patience, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, absolutely. There's so much bureaucracy behind this, and and they want to trust everybody, and they can't trust anybody, and and who's what level of clearance and all that. Oh, uh, oh my, my tail wants to fall off just thinking about it. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. No problem. <laughs> All right. All right. Anything um, else? Yeah. Nothing. All right. You don't come no. on me to give you the blessings. Uh, just... There was two questions from. Uh, okay. Krellick. Go ahead. Don, go ask the question from Krellick. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Right. Okay. Chris, uh, Krellick's question. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, yes. Uh, Grindel, the internet has this thing called dogman encounters. Are these yeah. dogmen real or just made up? Um, they're real. They're taken from a realistic standpoint. There are the canine planets and the lupine planets. Um, and uh, actually the lupines came before the dogs, but uh, the dogs seem to have taken over because maybe they're cuter. I don't know, but I don't know what it is but yes they do they are real and they do exist okay 
And let me see. And some of the information you'll find there is not true, but most of it is pretty accurate. Okay. But We're, you have to you have to just sort of go through it. You'll see. Okay. We're running low or like it's almost almost two hours into this now. Yeah. And we were wondering if you would like to give us a closing blessing today. Oh Please. God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, not that I don't pray and stuff, but giving a closing in front a blessing in front of people that's like uh yeah, me showing my genitals or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, I will try. Okay, give me a give me a little time. All right, all right. Here we go. Can I give it in my language? That was preferred. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and and you don't want to see my genitals. Right? No, no, thanks. But anyway, no, it's awful. Go. Okay. Um, reptilians, not good. Okay, we're um. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Here we go. What a mutual worry. Young Joe, what? Macauqua Nancy Wuka Nimba Nakito Tinsy Quataqua. Oh, na. There, how's that? That sounds pretty good. Can you give us an interpretation now, please? It was like, um, God bless everyone that's here because I know they're here for the right reasons and that I know they all have a mission in this important time. And so bring out the very best in everyone in this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. How was that? Is that good enough? That'll pass, yep. Thanks. Oh, good, good. I passed the test. All right. I'm sorry about the general thing. That was un uncalled for. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they told me. Oh, shut up. That's uncalled for. All right. Thank all you right. so much. I'll Thank let you, so you go so you can do blessings. All right. Perfect. Are there Thank more you. questions? No, that was all the questions. One question here. What? Okay, never mind. Go away? Is it just separate? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Um, you check with Al Yaha later. All right. All righty then. I'll let you go for now. All right. Thank you so much, Grendel. It's always wonderful to see you and to talk to you. All right. Very good. Thank Bye. you, Grendel. Much love to you. Hello. Hi, welcome hey. back. Ooh, thank you thank so you. much. I, oh. Hello. <laughs> now I'm back. Okay. Thank you uh, so much. Do blessings now? No. Um, we have uh, Debbie's going to do a blessing in our room, and then um, is anyone in your room going to do a blessing or? Anybody here? Yeah, yeah. I'll do one. Oh, David will do a blessing. Anybody okay. else? Okay. Jack oh, of the Valley. People in the room. I'll do one too. Okay, Don will do one. And I have Angie, Barb, and David. Oh, okay, David. perfect. Okay. All right, we'll start with Don and David. <laughs> well, Angie and David. I'm sorry, Barb's not going to okay, do. We'll start. That. We'll start with this room, and we'll go to your room. So go ahead, Deb. All right. Ayaka o naeta a so maika a so onaia. O aika yete iso naeta o naia a katosina a. O so iako o naeta a maia oka ia a. O so ia o naia a no sa ia a. Namaste. Yes. Shine as brightly as you can with the power of God and make sure that all your truths are really true. And make sure that your love is being projected in a way that is helpful and kind, loving and compassionate. God be with you all and raise you up in the way that he sees fit. 
Thank you. And go ahead, Don. What? Blessings. The essence of the universe contains all peoples and all matters and all essences and brings forth the greatest joys for all of us and not just one. But right now we are concentrated on you so that you may rise up for it is your time. Let us help you and be a part of who you are and let us know what your essence is in truth so that we, we may embrace it heartily thank you we'll go to your room now first oh david first yeah come on david over here the light was in the okay david's first Kuna <laughs> Let all good things be part of your ascension. May it also uplift everyone around you, for that is its purpose. You are the light. You are the guidance. You are the example. You are the way that must be shown in truth. And as you are God's example, you are shining and pure. So let all these things come through as it should come through in the way of the light. And let the light be your guidance and shine on your path, which is ahead of you always. Go ahead. It is your way to be separate, but it is now time to unite and be part of one another's lives in a way that is uplifting and edifying. Please note that you are not here to be alone and you are not here to do it by yourselves, but you are here to help one another, guide one another, lift one another, and shine your lights together so that whenever anyone looks at this world, they will only see light. Thank you. Thank you so very much. So... Next week, is there an, is there is there another one or no? No, what was it? I think okay. I'm, we're done. All right. Well, thank you so very much, Jim. It's it's been a wonderful session, and the crew stayed with us a little longer than uh, planned, but it was better. And Elijah, of course, was amazing. It's always good to see Grendel. So, um, yeah, it was a nice All session. Right. So next week we'll have Max here. He'll be channeling. Yeah, and then you'll be back a week after that. So very good. Perfect. So everyone have a wonderful <clears throat> day, night. Morning. Good morning, wherever you are, and we'll see you next week. Much love to you. Yeah. Namaste. Much love. Bye bye. Much love all. Much love.